Hey, it's not a Friday, but I'm here with a special episode because Intel has just launched Lunar Lake, the next generation laptop chips, which is the company's most important upgrade in many, many years. Kind of feels like the company is hoping that this chip will save them. So let's see if it can. This video was sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, the background for this chip is that in the last few years, Intel has fallen behind in the thin and light premium laptop market completely. My MacBook and my Qualcomm laptops have amazing battery life and performance, and even AMD's latest StrixPoint chips are really efficient in many cases too. So enter Intel Lunar Lake, which is the company's big bet on winning back the crown in this very crowded segment. It's a really aggressive redesign that is all about power efficiency. The company claims it is not only the most power efficient x86 processor ever, but also that it can beat Snapdragon in efficiency in many cases while still maintaining excellent performance. Apple's chips were quietly ignored at the event, so I guess Intel is not claiming that they're beating those in efficiency, but overall these are some pretty big claims. Now we don't have final reviews yet, but let's take a look at the demos that Intel did give us and then talk about the nitty gritty design details that Intel claims make their chips efficient. So Intel says there'll be 9 variants of the chip and these are all rated to run up to either 17 watts or 30 watts depending on which model you get, with my understanding being that the 17 watt configurations will be by far the most common one. And to start off with the demos, we got a game called Dota 2 maxing out one of those 17 watt models here and a machine with a 30 watt model here. For comparison, the latest AMD Strix Point was thrown in two, which also consumes about 30 watts down here, but only manages to match the 17 watt Intel chip in performance. And mind you, Intel's figures actually also include the power used by the RAM, because that is part of the package now too, and that makes this comparison even more impressive. Indeed, looking at the total system consumption, the laptop using the low Lower end Intel chip hovers at around 30 something watts under full load, while AMD hovers at around 40 something, which is pretty good. Meanwhile, Qualcomm doesn't actually show how many watts they consume at a chip level, but the whole machine is also at around 40 something, so indeed, under full load, the Intel machine seems to consume the least. Now, total system power draw depends on a lot of things, not just the chip. It includes, for example, the display, plus Intel might have chosen a game that is particularly well optimized for Intel, but either way, round one goes to Intel. Meanwhile, power efficiency demo number two was this one, showing YouTube playback on two very similar Dell machines featuring a previous generation Meteor Lake chip versus a current generation Lunar Lake model. And the difference here is very obvious, with the new chip consuming 40 to 50% less. Meanwhile, for demo number three, we saw an office benchmark running at roughly equal performance, and while on Meteor Lake it generally hovered at below 55 watts, on the newer Lunar Lake it was more like 35 watts. The official claim that Intel made during this keynote is that they improved the total package power by 50% and that they now beat competitors like Qualcomm in battery life in multiple tasks by a pretty decent margin. I'm somewhat skeptical of that until I actually see it for myself and some of the 20 plus hour battery claims that I've seen should have basically been ignored, but I did check every demo device that I could get my hands on and they all showed 10 hours of battery life or more even at full brightness, often even with an OLED display at high power settings, so I'm cautiously optimistic that this will be pretty good at least. Intel even implied that in the future there'll be fanless models coming out at only 9 watts, which would be pretty amazing for an Intel chip. Okay, now how does the company claim that they have achieved all of this supposed efficiency? Unlike most other Intel laptop chips, which are basically desktop chips that were scaled down to smaller devices, Lunar Lake is Intel's first premium series custom designed only for thin and light machines. All other form factors like desktops and heavier laptops will get a whole different kind of chip later this year called Arrow Lake. So Lunar Lake can be completely unburdened by the expectations of desktop processors, which allowed the designers to become much more aggressive about their optimizations. What can be unburdened by what has been. Including the LPDDR5X RAM as part of the package is the most obvious choice at a glance, and they claim that this way they need 40% less power for moving data between the chip and the RAM. Of course, this means that you're stuck with the 16 or 32 gig option that you choose, as RAM is not upgradable, but then again, it rarely ever is in the ultra thin category that this targets. Anyway, the other easy source of efficiency gains comes from the main compute tile being manufactured using TSMC's highly efficient 3 nanometer process, which is a big leap from last generation's Intel 4 and TSMC 5. 
The third big upgrade comes from the fact that they included four dedicated power management chips, which have much more precise and targeted controls over voltage. And meanwhile, the fourth improvement is that they significantly boosted the so-called efficiency or e-cores. There are now four of them instead of the two to three that we had previously. They were given twice as much cash, the cores themselves were completely redesigned, and they now sit on completely separate power rails so this part of the chip can be turned on and off independently from the rest. Combined, this means that we now have a cluster of these efficiency cores that is autonomous and significantly more competent than last year's. Intel showed that some apps like Microsoft Teams can now run completely on e-cores without turning on the p-cores at all, while in the past they had to jump back and forth. And in the YouTube playback that we discussed earlier, most of the efficiency gains come from the fact that the entire playback happens on the e-cores. E-cores are of course designed to be more efficient than p-cores at less intense tasks, and Intel tries to use those and completely avoid waking up the p-cores at all where possible. Now besides that, we also got some pretty big changes for the P cores. Beside the usual generational improvements, they most notably completely ripped out hyperthreading, which they claim is less effective as the chip gets smaller. Ripping out the hyperthreading hardware allows them to simplify each core, which means a 15% efficiency improvement while also having what they claim is the strongest CPU core in its class, though early benchmarks show that multi-core performance only becomes kind of middle of the road. So they're simplifying and focusing on efficiency here as well, which is a little bit going at the expense of peak performance, but given their design goals, I do think that that makes sense. Meanwhile, Intel has not cheaped out on the GPU, however, as that jumped another 30% over last year's already very capable Meteor Lake, while also claiming to consume less power. The few demos that we got showed a Blender render completing way faster versus last gen, and games like F1 playing at a comfortable 20 to 30 frames higher than the AMD competition, and of course dunking even harder harder on Qualcomm 2. Did Intel cherry pick games that were particularly well optimized for their processors versus those of the competition for these demos? I bet, but still pretty good results. Oh, and if you care, they also say that the MPU has gotten a lot better. It has 48 tops now, though even Intel's own AI demos hardly ever used it, defaulting to the GPU instead, so I cannot really say anything about it. That said, I was told that the Copilot Plus PC features would be coming to Intel around October if all goes well, so there might be something useful for the NPU later. Now again, we'd have to wait for full reviews for the complete picture, but overall, all of this looks pretty promising, and it actually makes me feel really weird about Meteor Lake. The last generation Intel chips came out like half a year ago or something, and if even half of what Intel is saying is true about Lunar Lake, Intel has made those look very poor in comparison. The company completely abandoned basically all the major architecture ideas from Meteor Lake and made what seems to be just a much better chip all around just half a year later. Hey, Editing Martin here. I've since learned that two completely different teams were designing the different chips. The Lunar Lake team was told to only focus on the thin and light devices. The Meteor Lake team was told to focus on something that can scale all the way down from kind of low power levels to high power levels. That's why we have these two differences. But yeah, I understand that. I still don't like it. I wouldn't want to be a Meteor Lake customer, and especially because all the new laptops with the Lunar Lake chips are coming out basically right away. We've seen Lunar Lake machines from basically all the OEMs in the thin and light form factor, plus even an MSI gaming handheld, and most of these are launching either in a few weeks or close to it. The lineup seems pretty promising, and I'm super happy that Qualcomm has finally lit an efficiency fire under Intel's butt. Let's hope Intel actually delivers. Now, whether the company ends up winning or not, I find few things as inspiring as engineers trying to solve really hard problems. And if you'd like to learn how to solve engineering problems yourself, or you'd just like to learn how your tech works under the hood, then check out Brilliant. Brilliant is a fantastic online learning community designed to help you learn STEM skills, maths, physics, engineering, computer science, they have it all, and they're designed to help you learn to think like an engineer. There are beginner-friendly courses like Thinking in Code, where you actually get to learn some of the basics, or advanced ones like how LLMs or large language models work, which I've even used myself for research in past videos. The specialty of Brilliant is that all of their courses are designed from the ground up with interactivity in mind, so they break complicated topics into smaller chunks, which you then practice right away. Not only is this proven to be more effective at making you actually remember what you've just learned, it's also just way more fun than simply passively consuming information, so you're more likely to stick with it. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org TFC or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription if you you choose to get one. So happy learning and I'll see you on Friday in the original Friday checkout. Bye.